Well, I pray you have a wonderful Thursday uh, this week, brothers and sisters. And again, as always, thank you for watching or listening to this devotion. Today we are in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6. And I need to share with you that even though uh, this, this is being broadcast um, on July 28, I was actually out in California when I read this chapter devotionally and wrote in my journal. It was on uh, June 18, so over a month ago. And we had just finished the uh, the Southern Baptist Convention's annual meeting out in Anaheim, and I guess all that was taking place there, especially the decisions regarding clergy sex abuse and some of the debate around that issue, were on my mind and heart. Because when I read this chapter, the verse that really jumped out at me is verse 3, and I think you'll understand why when I read it. Chapter 6, verse 3 of Second Corinthians, he says, "...giving no cause for offense." In anything, so that the ministry will not be discredited. Now look at that again. Do not give cause for offense in anything, so that the ministry, ministry, the gospel ministry, will not be discredited. So I was reading that as a as a disciple, but also as a pastor, as a someone who has some leadership level, you know, leadership responsibilities in our convention denomination. And we've just debated all this about clergy sex abuse. And so it was all on my heart. And that verse jumped out at me. Um, during our convention, we made some important decisions, took some big steps regarding clergy sex abuse, the creation of a database uh, for, for credibly accused clergy, which I 1,000% support, uh, and some other things. And there'll be more steps we have to take in the future. We've just gotten started. There's a lot more work to be done. But during the conversations and discussion and debate on this and other issues, from time, it, it was sometimes said, you know, the world is watching, and, and the world was and is watching. Um, and, and, but, but some people said, we shouldn't worry about what the world thinks. All we should care about is what God thinks. And I get that. I understand that. Sometimes what the world thinks contradicts what God thinks. I, I get that. But the Bible tells us in more than one place, there are times when we need to pay attention to what the world thinks because what the world thinks does matter. It is wrong and unbiblical to emphatically say we should never care about what the world thinks. That's just nonsense, and it's unbiblical. Here's one verse where he says, giving no cause for offense in anything so that the ministry will not be discredited. To not discredit the ministry, the gospel, in the eyes of the lost and unchurched, in the eyes of the world. The Apostle Paul, writing in Timothy, lists as one of the qualifications for someone to be a pastor is that he has to have a good reputation with those outside the church which means what the world thinks about a pastor matters. So don't ever emphatically say we should not worry about what the world thinks. We shouldn't care. Only We should only care about... No, God says we need to care because we discredit the gospel. We discredit the ministry when we don't worry if the world's you know, bothered by our sin. I'm preaching a little bit, aren't I? Well, anyhow, um, I, I still feel passionate about it. Because if the world doesn't respect the way we live, our, they don't have to agree with us on, on everything. But if they think we're hypocrites, if they think we care about power or money more than, more than we should, we're never going to be effective in ministering to the world and to the lost and doing evangelism. Somebody, somebody who's going to listen to us as we share the gospel has to at least say, you're sincere and you're, you do what's right, even if I don't agree with you on everything. You're not sinning. You're doing good. And when we cover up sex abuse, or we say, well, let's just not talk about it because we don't want to hurt the reputation of the church. Listen, covering it up and not dealing with it hurts the reputation of the church more than being honest and dealing with it. A pastor sleeping with a church member that's not his wife, that's more than an affair. 
Um, that disqualifies that man from being a pastor. Don't, don't water it down by just saying, well, it was just an affair. No, it was a lot more than an affair. Causes offense and discredits the ministry. Well, I'm a preacher preaching to preachers. But I'm also preaching to church members. Hear me. Anyone and everyone can be spiritually restored to fellowship with Christ and the church and fellow believers. But there's a difference between restoring someone spiritually and restoring them to fellowship. There's a difference between that and restoring someone who's fallen to the ministry. There are things that permanently disqualify someone from being a pastor. That's biblical, and I will stand on that till the day I die. That's the word for today, and I'll see you next time.